Alhamdulillah. Salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Amma ba'd. Then, my dear brothers, are the sisters here? Yes, my dear sisters, it seems like it was just a few days ago, just a short while ago, when the Muslims around the world were receiving the good news that the sighting of the moon had been sighted. <coughs> But as we've come to realize, ayyuhal ikhwa, these blessed nights and days have passed by very quickly. Now, and because just a short while ago, it seems, the Muslims were congratulating one another, greeting one another with the arrival of this shahar al-mubarak, this blessed month. However, as Allah Azawajal has said concerning this month, that it is ayyam and ma'dudat, a limited number of days. Allah Azza wa Jal has said, Ayaman ma'dudat, a limited number of days. And as Ahlul Ilm have explained the meaning of this, that it means that even though this month of Ramadan it doesn't decrease from being 29 days or being more than 30 days, even though it's a whole month, that Allah Azza wa Jal has made it easy upon His servants. He's made this month easy upon His servants and easy for them to carry out the righteous actions within it. And from that which has been said concerning its meaning is that Allah Azza wa Jal has made it so that this month passes by quickly. Wala shak ayyuhal ikhwa, my dear brothers and sisters, this is something that each and every single one of us can bear witness to as we have experienced it firsthand just the other day. The Muslims were welcoming the arrival of this blessed month and now we find ourselves on the cusp of bidding farewell to it as it's about to conclude and come to an end. Now, however, if the Muslim throughout this month he concerned himself with the obligations that Allah Azza wa Jal has placed upon him and so he concerned himself with the five daily prayers and fasting throughout the days of this month and along with those obligations he carried out the supererogatory acts of, acts of worship those recommended and desirable acts of ibadah of various kinds then la shak there's no doubt that he has performed much good and inshallah ta'ala he will be given a tremendous reward if the Muslim, throughout these nights, from the first night of Ramadan, then he carried out those actions, recited the Qur'an, made dua, gave in charity, and he prayed the taraweeh, then inshallah he will be given a great reward, ayyuhal ikhwa. And remember the statement of the Messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wassalam. Man qama ma'al imam hatta yansarif, kutiba lahu qiyama layla. Whoever stands in prayer, yani in taraweeh, with the Imam, until the Imam concludes the prayer, then it will be written for him as though he spent that whole night in prayer. Naam. And so if the Muslim, he busied himself with the taraweeh throughout the nights of Ramadan, and he was consistent upon that throughout every single night, then it will be written for him as though he spent every single night from these blessed nights in prayer. The whole of the nights. And the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he also said, Man qama Ramadan, imanan wa ihtisaban, ghufira lahu ma taqaddama min dhanbi. Whoever stands in prayer throughout Ramadan, having iman, hoping for Allah's reward, then his previous sins shall be forgiven. And la shak ayyuhal ikhwa, if he prayed every single night, 
then there's no doubt and no room for any uncertainty that he would have prayed during Laylatul Qadr. In relation to which the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he mentioned a specific hadith. And he said, Man qama Laylatul Qadr imanan wahtisaban ghafira lahu ma taqaddama min dhambi. Whoever stands Laylatul Qadr in prayer, having iman, hoping for Allah's reward, then his previous sin shall be forgiven. Naam ayyuhal ikhwa, this month of Ramadan, this shahar al-mubarak is also shahar al-ghufran. The month within which it's been made easy for the servants to attain Allah's forgiveness. Through these various actions, and that's why the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, why he said, رَغِمَ أَنْفُ مْرَئِنْ أَدَّرَكَ رَمَدَانْ وَلَمْ يُغْفَرْ لَهِ Meaning, disgraced and humiliated is the one who meets Ramadan and isn't forgiven. Naam, because Allah Azza wa Jal has made it easy for the servants to, ob- to attain his forgiveness by carrying out these various acts of worship that Allah Azza wa Jal, he loves and is pleased with. And just as this blessed month, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, is a month of attaining Allah's forgiveness, then likewise it's a month within which Allah Azza wa Jal, he has those whom he frees from the fire. When we look at the books of our hadith in the chapters related to the virtues of Ramadan, then we find that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he said, وَلِلَّهِ أُتَقَاءُ مِنَ النَّارِ وَذَلِكَ كُلْ لَيْلَةِ that Allah has those whom he frees from the fire and that occurs every single night. Reflect upon this, my dear brothers and sisters. Every single night, from the first night of Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he chooses from his servants those whom he frees from the fire and he saves them from that fire. Every single night, ayyuhal ikhwa, Allah Azza wa Jal, He writes for them that they will be freed and saved from the fire. And so for this reason, the Muslim, from the very first night of Ramadan, he doesn't cease to want to be from those whom Allah Azza wa Jal frees from the fire. And so he rushes towards these good deeds that Allah Azza wa Jal loves and is pleased with. Hoping for Allah's forgiveness and hoping that Allah Azza wa Jal frees him from the fire. And so he shows Allah Azza wa Jal the good within himself by performing these actions, hoping for all of that. And just as this month is a month, just as it's a month, ayyuhal ikhwa, where Allah frees those whom he wills from the fire, then likewise it's a month where the servant, the Muslim, can be granted the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Ridwanullah. Wa ridwanum min Allahi akbar. And the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is greater. Naam, ayyuhal ikhwa, this blessed month has many virtues. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed these virtues within it. Placed within it much good and much barakah and khair. And Allah Azza wa Jal, He chooses from His creation that which He chooses to place these virtues within. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He said, لِسَّاعِمِ farhatan, farhatun in the fitri wa farhatun yawma liqa'i rabbi Meaning that the fasting person is happy and pleased يعني, due to his fasting on two occasions. The first is at the time of breaking his fast. And the second is on the day when he meets his Lord. So the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he told us that the Muslim will be happy, pleased due to his fasting on two occasions. One which is brought forward and that he has in this life and one which is delayed that he will have in the Akhirah. Then as for the one that takes place in this life, then this occurs from two angles. The first 
is that throughout Ramadan, Allah Azzawajal has commanded the believers to fast throughout the days and to abstain from that food and drink and relations and so on. And so the Muslim, he implements the command of Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala and he abstains. <laughs> and Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed him with numerous blessings and from those blessings he's blessed him with food and drink. And so when the time for fasting comes on the day from the days of Ramadan, when the time for iftar comes, the time for Maghrib comes, and the servant has completed fasting that day, then he's pleased and he's happy that Allah Azza wa Jal gave him the tawfiq to complete this act of worship. And he's happy and pleased that Allah Azza wa Jal at the time of Maghrib has permitted him to enjoy his blessings and enjoy that food and drink that he has granted him. Now, And so he's happy and pleased at all of this. And the second angle where this happiness occurs from the Muslim due to his fasting is on the day of Eid, Yom al Eid, Eid al Fitr. Naam. Because on the day of Eid, on the day of Eid, the Muslim, he would have completed fasting for the whole of the month of Ramadan. He would have completed the period of fasting that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed upon us. Naam. And so when he reflects upon this on the day of Eid, that Allah Azza wa Jal gave him the tawfiq, placed this virtue upon him, favored him from those amongst, uh, from amongst his creation, to spend the whole month fasting, completing this great act of worship that Allah Azza wa Jal loves and is pleased with, then he will be happy and pleased with this. He'll be happy and pleased with this. Naam. And so he realized this within himself and he will realize that this is something that necessitates that he is grateful to Allah Azza wa Jal and gives thanks to him. And that it's something that necessitates that he is or that he glorifies Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. Naam. Think about how many people ayyuh al-ikhwa were eagerly Anticipating and waiting for Ramadan to come Due to the virtues and the blessings and the barakah that has been placed within it And so that they might carry out some of these actions that Allah Azza wa Jal loves and please, is pleased with And rewards immensely But then death came to them and It came to them and came between them and between Ramadan and think about how many people may have met Ramadan, the first part of Ramadan, but then death came between them and between them completing the whole month of Ramadan fasting. Now, so when you realize this on the day of Eid, then you'll realize the virtue of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you. And you will be pleased with this. And you'll realize that due to this Allah Azza wa Jal, He should be glorified. Now. Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentions concerning this blessed month وَلِتُخْمِلُوا الْإِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَان And all of this, ayyuhal ikhwa, is connected to this part of this month that we are in. The meanings of, this ay- of these ayat so that you complete the period, yani the period of fasting, the month of fasting, Ramadan. And so that you glorify Allah for that which He has guided you to and give thanks. And if my servants ask concerning me, then I am near. I answer the call of the one who supplicates when he supplicates. 
All of this is connected to this time that we find ourselves in Ayyuhal Ikhwa. Allah says, well, it took me a little idda, so when you completed the period. And you glorify Allah for that which He has guided you to and give thanks. Because La Shak Ayyuhal Ikhwa, being able to complete this whole month fasting and performing these righteous actions, praying, that all of this is guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal. It's guidance from Allah and something that you wouldn't have been able to do if Allah Azza wa Jal didn't guide you to it. That's why the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said to the Sahaba, Lawla Allah mahtadayna wala sumna wala sallayna If it wasn't for Allah, we wouldn't have been guided and we wouldn't have fasted nor would we have prayed. Naam ayyuhal ikhwa, these acts of worship that we've been guided to, this is guidance from Allah Azza wa Jal, for which He should be glorified. And that's why the takbir has been legislated. The takbir, so that we can glorify Allah Azza wa Jal. Once the period has completed, which is when? Eid day. Naam? Eid day. The period concludes Ayyuhal Ikhwa At the time of Maghrib The night before Eid Because that's when the last fast Concludes Naam. So this is when the period concludes So from this point The takbir is legislated So that we can glorify Allah Azza wa Jal For allowing us to complete that period And from that which is established From the Sahaba and how they would make this takbir is by saying Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Naam. And so we should glorify Allah Azza wa Jal for guiding us to this, to this blessed month and to these actions. And glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal is from taqwa al qulub, is from the piety. That occurs within one's heart because it's something ayyuhal ikhwa that is from the actions of the heart. The Muslim, he realizes and feels within his heart, within himself, that Allah Azza wa Jal is worthy of being glorified for that which he has guided him to. And from the reasons that fasting has been prescribed, is so that we can increase in our taqwa. Kutiba alaykum siyam kama kutiba ala ladhina min qablikum. Fasting has been obligated upon you As it was obligated upon those who came before you So that you might attain a taqwa Wala shaka ayyuhal ikhwa Glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal is from taqwa al-qulub Naam And so Yawm al-Eid ayyuhal ikhwa The Muslim And the night before the Muslim he glorifies Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala and is pleased with that which Allah Azza wa has guided him to and favored him with by allowing him to complete the period of fasting and he's happy with that and this is the second angle where the Muslim is happy due to his fasting that occurs in this life that happiness that is brought forward remember the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said لِسَّاءٍ farhatan farhatun in the fitri وَفَرْحَةٌ يَوْمَ لِقَاءِ رَبِّهِ That the servant or the, the, fast, the fasting person is pleased due to his fasting on two occasions. One at the time of fasting and the second which occurs on the day when he meets his Lord. So this is the happiness that takes place at the time of breaking his fast. Each and every day at the time of Maghrib, Iftar, throughout the days of Ramadan and likewise on the day of the Eid. For having completed that period. Now. As for the happiness that the Muslim has due to his fasting that takes place on the day when he meets his Lord, then this comprises of the Muslim being happy with the reward that Allah Azza wa Jal has given him. And from the reasons that he's given him this reward is due to the actions that he put forward in this life. And fasting 
is from those actions. And so Allah wa ta'ala will reward him for that. Inshallah ta'ala. If Allah accepts it from us. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he will reward him for that. And he will enter him into his jannah. And he will place him in gardens under which rivers flow. And he will provide him with places to dwell in that are beautiful. In the gardens of Adam. And numerous other rewards, ayyuhal ikhwah. That he will enjoy in eternal bliss. Naam. And so the Muslim is happy with that. And likewise, it also, or he's also happy due to his fasting because it leads, inshallah ta'ala, to the ridwan of Allah, to the pleasure of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala. Wa ridwanum min Allahi akbar. And the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal is greater. In the hadith of Abi Sa'id al Khudri, radiallahu ta'ala, an, the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Inna Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala yaqul, that indeed Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, he says, Ya ahl al Jannah, O people of Jannah, O people of Paradise. فيقولون لبيك وسيديك والخير في يديك They reply We are at your service and the good is in your hands فيقول هل رضيتم Allah says Are you satisfied? Are you pleased? فيقولون وما لنا ألا نرضى وقد أعتيتنا ما لم تؤتي أحدا من خلقك why should we not be pleased when you have given to us that which you haven't given to any from the creation? فَيَقُولْ هَلْ أُعْتِيكُمْ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Allah says, Shall I give to you that which is better than that? That which is greater than that? And let's just pause here a moment, أَيُّهَا الْإِخْوَانِ Allah Azza wa Jal is addressing the people of Jannah, the inhabitants of paradise. Those whom he has saved from the hellfire. Those whom, ha- whom he has given these gardens under which rivers flow. And these beautiful dwelling places in the gardens of Aden to reside therein forever. Given them wives. Given them, or within Jannah, there is that which no human eye has ever seen. And no ear has ever heard of. And things which haven't even crossed mankind's hearts or minds. Allah Azza wa Jalla is addressing them. And He says, Shall I give you that which is better than that? فَيَقُولُونَ يَا رَبَّ وَأَيُّ شَيْءٍ أَفْضَلَ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Oh our Lord, and what is better than that? فَيَقُولُ أُحِلُّ عَلَيْكُمْ رِضْوَانِ فَلَا أَسْخَطْ عَلَيْكُمْ بَعْدَهُ عَبَدًا Allah Azza wa Jal, He says, I will grant you my pleasure. And so, I'll never be displeased with you again after that. وَرِضْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرٌ And this is greater. Being granted the pleasure of Allah Azza wa Jal is greater and better than all of that. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has said, وَعَدَ اللَّهُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَمَسَاكِنَ طَيِّبَةً فِي جَنَّاتِ عَدْنِ وَرِدْوَانٌ مِّنَ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرُ ذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَذِينَ Meaning that Allah has promised the believers, male and female, gardens under which rivers flow to dwell therein forever. And beautiful places to reside within the gardens of Aden. And being granted the pleasure of Allah, which is greater and better. That is the greatest success. Naam. And so this, ayyuhal ikhwa, 
is the second happiness that the Muslim has due to his fasting. This fasting that he carried out in this blessed month of Ramadan. Now, going back to the ayat where Allah Azza wa Jal, he said, وَلِتُكْمِلُوا الْعِدَّةِ وَلِتُكَبِّرُوا اللَّهَ عَلَى مَا هَدَاكُمْ وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ وَإِذَا سَأَلَكَ إِبَادِي أَنِّي فَإِنِّي قَرِيبٌ If my servants ask concerning me, then I am near. أُجِيبُ دَعْوَةَ الدَّاعِي إِذَا دَعَانٌ I answer, respond to the one who supplicates when he supplicates. نعم, and so it should be known, أيها الإخوة, that the day of Eid, Yom Al-Eid, is a day of making dua, of asking Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, of supplicating. And from the best du'as that you can make on the day of Eid is to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our righteous actions from us. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for yourself, for your loved ones, your parents, your wives, your children, your brothers and your sisters in Islam, that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He accepts their righteous actions from them. Naam, the best thing that you can say to your brother when you greet him Yawm Al-Eid is making this dua. And from that which has been established from the Sahaba is that they would greet one another and they would make dua by saying Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum May Allah accept from us and from you. Naam, because the Muslim Ayyuhal Ikhwa He might perform righteous actions However, he shouldn't look at those actions that he performed and put forth as though they are perfect and complete and sufficient and start to get complacent. This isn't, this isn't the way of the Muslim. Regardless of whatever he put forth, how great those actions might have been or numerous they were. Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Concerning the believers and how they should be towards their actions. Those who put forth whatever good they do whilst their hearts are afraid, knowing that they will return to their Lord. Ummuna Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. She asked the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam concerning the tafsir of this ayah. She said, Ya Rasulullah, Ahuwa rajul yazni wa yasrik wa yashrab al khamar. She said, O oh Messenger of Allah, is it that man yani, that this ayah relates to? Is it that man? Who fornicates, that man who steals and drinks alcohol. فقال, La he said, No, O daughter of a Siddiq, Walakin Hua Rajul Yatasaddak Wayasum wa Yusali Fayakhaf Allah Yutakabal Min. Meaning that it's that man who gives in charity, and he fasts, and he prays. But he's afraid that all of that will not be accepted from him. Those actions won't be accepted from him. Now, So this is how the Muslim should be, ayyuhal ikhwa. And that's why from the most important things that you can do on the day of Eid, when you greet your brother, is make dua for yourself and for him by saying, تَقَبَّلَ اللَّهُ مِنَّا وَمِنْكُمْ And just as Yawm Al-Eid is a day of making dua, asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our actions, then it's also a day within which the Muslim should be pleased and happy. And he should make this happiness apparent. 
Because this days of celebrations, ayyuha al-ikhwa, is a virtue from Allah, a favor upon this ummah, a blessing that He's given us these days to celebrate. All of the religions, all of the ways of life, the ideologies, they all have their days that they hold sacred and their days within which they celebrate. But what distinguishes <coughs> Islam is that the days of celebrations for the Muslims are connected to worshipping Allah wa Taala, the creator of the heavens and the earth and every <coughs> single thing between them. And likewise they are connected to some of the greatest acts of worship. Eid al-Fitr connected to Ramadan and fasting. And Eid al-Adha connected to the Hajj. And so no doubt, ayyuha al-ikhwa, <coughs> this is from the virtue of Allah and the favor of Him upon this ummah that He's given us these days of celebration. And so we should be happy and pleased with that. Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He says, قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَهُ وَخَيْرٌ مِمَّا يَجْمَعُونَ Meaning, say, by the grace of Allah, His virtues, they should rejoice, rejoice and be happy. That is better than everything that they accumulate. Naam, so the Muslim on this day, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, this day of Eid, is happy and he makes this apparent for that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed this ummah with. And just as it's a day, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, that brings us together as a result of carrying out this worship, brings us together to glorify Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala, brings us together so that we can make dua for one another. Then likewise, Yom al-Eid, the day of Eid, should also be a day where the Muslims are united. And they are brothers Sisters to one another, brothers in Iman, having that khuwa, that brotherhood, and that unity that Allah Azza wa Jal has commanded us with. Allah Subhanahu, He said, "Innama al mu'minuna ikhwa," meaning the believers are brothers one to another. Naam. In that which has passed, maybe throughout the year, there might have occurred between yourself and between your brothers and sisters, maybe from the community or the wider community. Some interactions, maybe some misunderstanding, maybe some bad dealings that have brought about a dislike between the two of you. A hatred between the two of you, an enmity between you. And this isn't good, ayyuh al-ikhwa. There's nothing good that comes from this. Because Allah Azza wa has commanded us to be united and to have that brotherhood. And to not have that enmity. To love our brothers and our sisters. And so that which occurred in the past might have occurred. And when you reflect upon it, in reality it might have been something minor. But a shaitan, he comes... And he makes things seem bigger than they actually are. And so there remains in the heart that which remains in the heart. But there's nothing good, ayyuh al-ikhwa, from being disunited. And having this enmity towards one another. Rather, this is something that can carry severe consequences. In the hadith of Abu Huraira, Radiallahu ta'ala an He said that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam He said Yurfa'u al-a'mal Kullu thnayn wa khamis That all of the deeds, all of the actions Are raised and presented to Allah On the Mondays and the Thursdays Fayugfar likulli mri'in La yushriku billahi shay'an 
And so every person who doesn't associate anything in worship with Allah is forgiven. إِلَّا الْمُتَشَاهِنَيْنِ يُقَالْ أَنْذِرُوا هَذَيْنِ حَتَّى يَسْطَلِحَا Every person, every person who doesn't associate anything in worship with Allah is forgiven. Except those two who have this enmity towards one another. This hatred towards one another and this dislike towards one another. It said concerning them, leave them until they're reconciled. So there's no good that comes from this, ayyuhal ikhwa. Rather, we should be brothers in iman. Brothers united upon the truth. United upon the Quran, upon the sunnah of the messenger of Allah, alayhi salatu wasalam. Upon the understanding of the Salaf al-Salih, the Sahaba, Ridwanullahi alayhim. Naam. As Allah tabarak wa ta'ala has said, Innamal mu'minuna ikhwa. The believers, the brothers, one to another. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Al Muslim, akhul Muslim. That the believer is the brother of the fellow believer. Naam. And so on the day of Eid, if the Muslims are happy and pleased at the favors of Allah wa ta'ala, upon them and they're in a good mood, then it's the perfect opportunity for these two brothers or these two sisters to try to reconcile matters between them and to correct and to rectify that relationship. Now. And la shak, the one who makes that first move and takes that first step to reconcile, to rectify the relationship, then he's the one who's better. And also, ayyuhal ikhwa, on this day of Eid, if your brother, he comes to you, he approaches you, and he makes dua for you, and he asks you to pardon him, and he wants to reconcile, and start a new page, then it's not befitting that you reject him and turn away from him. La. It's not befitting for the Muslim to behave in this way, particularly on this day of Eid. As for this time of the month, ayyuhal ikhwa, this, when we re- reach this, uh, the end of this blessed month, then there's three things that we should remind ourselves concerning. And that is uh, zakat al-fitr, and the takbir wa salatul eid. Then as for zakatul fitr, then it's an obligation to give this zakatul fitr, as has been mentioned in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Umar, who said, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam zakatul fitr, sa'an min tamar, o sa'an min sha'ir, على العبد والحر والذكر والأنثى والصغير والكبير من المسلمين. meaning that the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he prescribed zakat al fitr to be a sa from dates or sa from valley upon the slave and the free person, the male and the female, the young and the old. Naam, so this zakat al-fitr is, to, is an obligation and is to be given on behalf of these people, for those who have responsibility for them. And the time of zakat al-fitr is that it's to be given before Salat al-Eid, before the Eid prayer is established. And as Ahlul Ilm have said, and has been mentioned in the narrations, that it can be given a day or two before, and there's... No harm in that, bi idnillahi ta'ala. And this zakat al fitr should also be given in the form of food, of staple foods. Now, it's not sufficient if a person gives the zakat al fitr in the form of money. Because the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he prescribed that it be given as these forms of food. Naam, and so it should be given as dates, or wheat, or barley, or 
rice, that which the people are accustomed to in the place where it is given and that they prefer. And likewise, in relation to zakat al fitr, then it can also be given on behalf of the unborn child. And from that which has been mentioned concerning zakat al fitr, the hadith of Abdullah ibn Abbas, radiallahu ta'ala an, that the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, or he said, Farada Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, zakat al fitr, min Ramadan. Tuhratun lissa'im wa tu'matun lil masakin. Tuhratun lissa'im min al ladwi wa rafath wa tu'matun lil masakin. Faman addaha qabla salah, fahiya zakatun makbula. Waman addaha ba'da salah, fahiya sadaqa min al sadaqat. Naam. Meaning that. The, zakat al- the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prescribed the zakat al-fitr as a purification for the one who fasted. Because throughout Ramadan, you said short reminder, huh? <laughs> throughout Ramadan, inshallah we will finish soon, inshallah ta'ala. Throughout Ramadan, ayyuhal ikhwa, the Muslim, when he was fasting, then he might have fallen short in his worship and certain things might have occurred from him that might have caused him to lose some of that reward and so when he gives this zakat al-fitr then inshallah ta'ala it will serve as a purification for him for that which occurred from him and him falling short in that act of worship and likewise the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he said وَتُعْمَةٌ masakin," that it is food for those in need, for the poor, that it's food for them. And so when we give it, ayyuhal ikhwa, then you should give it with an easy heart. Give it with an easy heart, knowing that this food is for your brothers and your sisters who are in need and are struggling. They need this. And this is something that will bring your brothers and your sisters happiness and joy on the day of Eid and maybe for weeks and months or even the whole year after that Naam, because they have that by which they can feed themselves feed their children and feed their families and so they will be pleased and happy at this Naam. and so when you give it give it with an easy heart knowing that it will aid your brothers and sisters and bring joy to them and happiness to them on this day when you are happy at the favor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon you for letting you complete this month carrying out this great act of worship and likewise it's to be given before the Eid prayer is performed and that's an obligation and if a person intentionally delays it until after the Eid prayer then as Ahlul Ilm have said, that this is something that is uh, that, that will cause him to be afim, sinful. Now, as for the takbir, then it's already been spoken about. The takbir is legislated from what time? From Maghrib, the nights before Eid, until until the Eid prayer is performed. And likewise, in the Eid prayer, there are additional takbirat in the first and in the second rakah. In the first rakah, seven additional takbirat and five in the second. And the Eid prayer in and of itself is a form of glorifying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So na'am, this takbir is to be said and it's to be repeated during this time. (coughs) And the men say out aloud every so often. And the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he would leave his house on the day of Eid, then he would say this takbir. And from that which has been established from the Sahaba is that they would say it by saying, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. 
And this is a form of glorification to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that which He has guided us to from these acts of worship. As for Salatul Eid, the Eid prayer, then it's from the Sunan al Mustahabba, from the highly recommended acts and desirable acts of worship. And from Ahlul Ilm are those who hold the position that it's wajib. And so if a person he doesn't attend, he is sinful. Naam. And so the Muslim, male, female, whether they are, the females are praying at that time of the month or not. And likewise the children should strive to attend this prayer. Naam. And they should adorn themselves and beautify themselves upon this day. Naam, but they shouldn't resort to trying to beautify themselves and adorn themselves with anything that will lead them to the disobedience of Allah Azza wa Jal. Because in disobeying Allah Azza wa Jal, there's nothing beautiful about that. And there's no beautification in that. Now, And likewise from that which has been mentioned concerning the Eid prayer is that the women folk the children and the women folk, the teenage girls, and also those women who are not praying at that time of the month, that they should also attend. And from that which has been narrated, لِيَشْهَدْنَا الْخَيْرِ وَدَعْوَةَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ So that they can witness the good that takes place. The good that takes place from the Muslims coming together, being united, coming together for this act of worship, glorifying Allah Azza wa Jal, making the takbir, establishing the prayer, making dua for one another, being united and being pleased and happy on this day. They can witness all this good. And likewise, they will listen to the khutbah and benefit from that which is said in the khutbah. And this, inshallah ta'ala, is good. All of this is good. And likewise, with da'wat al-Muslimin, that they can still participate in making the dua, in supplicating for their Muslim brothers and sisters. Now. So they can still participate in making the du'a Asking Allah Azza wa Jal to accept Our actions and their actions And this is very important Ayyuhal ikhwal that they attend And they see all of this good And witness the Muslims and everything that occurs During the Eid Salah Because this will serve As something That will keep them firm In their deen on this day On the day of Eid but also after this day, ayyuhal ikhwa. Naam, this is very important, especially when you consider the place that we live in, the time that we live in, and that which goes on in the society around us. <coughs> Naam. And from the sunan, on this day, is that the Muslim, he performs ghusl, and he beautifies himself, he wears from his best garments, <coughs> From that which Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed him with, the men apply perfume, and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would eat an odd number of dates, so that he would leave not fasting this day, as it's impermissible to fast on the day of Eid. And likewise, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he would leave his house making the takbir, and he would go to the musalla using one route and return using a different route so these are the, these are the sunan of the day of eid now and on this day ayyuhal ikhwa the muslims should be happy and they should celebrate now they should be happy and celebrate on these days However, they shouldn't allow this happiness lead them 
to fall into sin and to disobedience to Allah Azza wa Jal as we see from some of the Muslims. And on this day, Ayyuhal Ikhwa, my dear brothers and my dear sisters, when you attend the Eid prayer and you are happy and pleased with that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored you with, allowing you to complete this act of worship and guiding you to this and allowing you to attend the Eid prayer to witness all of this good and so you can make dua for one another then remember that out there ayyuhal ikhwa you have brothers and you have sisters who might be sick and they might be ill and this sickness has prevented them from leaving their homes they might be bedridden and so remember your brothers and sisters like this on this day when you are happy and pleased and reflect upon Allah's virtues upon you and his favors upon you and at the very least remember them in your du'as and if you know someone like this and you are you're able to then visit them visit them ayyuhal ikhwa if it's easy for you take them something that will bring them happiness on this day that their Muslim brother has remembered them and he wants them to be happy just like he is happy and on this day when you are celebrating and you're happy having no concern for your safety or the safety of your family then remember your brothers and sisters ayyuhal ikhwa in those places where they don't have this safety and they don't have this security that Allah Azza wa Jal has given to you they don't have that rather they are in places where it's very dangerous and they don't have any safety or security for their own lives or for their wealth or their family don't forget your brothers and your sisters ayyuhal ikhwa in Palestine or in Kashmir or in Afghanistan or in China the Uyghur Muslims who are being tes tested and trialed so when you're happy and celebrating on this day in safety then don't forget them and at the very least remember them in your du'as and likewise ayyuhal ikhwa on this day when you are celebrating enjoying the blessings and the favors of Allah Azza wa Jal upon you when you are sitting at that dining table that is or has upon it food of all different kinds delicacies and beautiful food and drink for you to enjoy then don't forget your brothers and your sisters ayyuhal ikhwa who are out there and struggling struggling going through difficulty and they don't have that which you've been given don't forget about them ayyuhal ikhwa you might give your children gifts and toys on this day you might give them that Eid money to bring them happiness and joy but some of the families ayyuhal ikhwa they don't have this those children they don't even have maybe a single box of treats for them to to be happy about and so if you know someone like this and Allah Azza wa Jal has blessed you and has given you from his vast provision and has made it easy for you then take them something to bring them happiness on this day if you are able give those children something ayyuhal ikhwa to make them happy even if it's a few pounds five pounds ten pounds just like you give your children and it makes them happy then inshallah ta'ala it will make them happy and within that is much khair Naam. And so, inshallah ta'ala, we will conclude with this. I ask Allah Azza wa Jal to make us and our parents, our families, our children, our brothers, our sisters, to make us from those 
but are granted his forgiveness and who are freed from the hellfire and who are granted his pleasure Naam. and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless and reward the brothers and sisters here aiding the masjid and accommodating the worshippers so that they can carry out these acts of ibadah that Allah Azza wa Jal He loves and He's pleased with. And inshallah ta'ala we'll end with that. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. Stud, one question. What's the signs of an accepted fasting in the month of Ramadan and Tawbah? So the question is, what is the signs that the actions have been accepted and from what Ahlul Ilm have said concerning this is that from the signs that a person's actions have been accepted is that it's followed by additional good deeds Naam, that a person's condition after he has made that toba and after he's performed those actions that he increases in his good and that he continues to perform those righteous actions and has more concern for them. And so this, inshallah ta'ala, is what Ahlul Ilm have mentioned, that his condition after that righteous action has been performed and after he's made the tawbah, that it's better. His condition is one which is better than what it was before Allah ta'ala a'lam. Jazakallah khairan, ikhwan. I know it's been a long, a long sitting. Barakallah fiqh, jazakallah khairan. Alhamdulillah, inshaAllah. Allah yawfiq.